full screen tayo and earphones on. Next one would be the third requirement, adjusting journal entries. Let us go again to a separate sheet. As I stated, we have several adjustment data. So number one, let's get on with it. The estimated life of the furniture and fixtures is four years with a scrap value of 2,000. Ano ba ang related transaction dito? Eh, doon pa lang sa una, nabanggit na yung furniture and fixtures. Ang sabi, ang furniture and fixtures daw ay 50,000. Okay? Paano siya ginornalize? So kung makikita mo, I'm making it as smooth as possible yung flow ng ating discussion by putting together the info doon sa tinatanong sa atin with regards the related info doon sa mga nakaraan nating pages. O, tignan mo yan. Furniture and fixtures, 50,000 daw. O, na-journalize siya dito. Ngayon, ano bang hinihingi dito Ad sa adjustment data? Eh, depreciation yan. Walang iba. Tama? O, alam natin. Debit, depreciation expense, credit, accumulated depreciation. O, the amount must be 1,000 pesos. Paano ba naging 1,000 yan? I ilang months daw ba? Ilang years daw? 4 years. 4 years, ibig sabihin, yan ay 48 months. Ang hinihingi lang dito, 1,000. Month. Are you following? So, divided by 48 months after deducting the scrap value. Tama? Straight line method. I hope you still remember. Cost less the salvage value divided by the useful life. Since one month ito, eh, the monthly ang computing mo, 1,000. Number two, expense method was used in recording the rental payment. Anong sabi? Okay. Anong transaction ba ang connected dito? Transaction, December 2. Paid rent for 3 months. Anong sabi? 16,800. Also, bought office supply, sabi, pero wala namang pakialam dito yung office supply sa adjustment data. Siguro later, tama? Oo nga, yan no? sa baba naman, office supplies. So, how was it recorded? Debit, rent expense, 16,800. Yung rent expense na muna, yung ating concern dito, 16,800. So, ano ang ating adjusting journal entry? Adjustment should be debit prepaid rent, credit rent expense. Ito na naman tayo. Chapter 6. Tama? This is recording of expenses. Okay? Prepayment of expenses. So, dalawang method. Asset method, expense method. Ang ginamit ay expense method. Ang sabi, lahat ito expense na. Lumalabas, mali siya. Kasi, 3 months yon, Pang 3 months. 1 month pa lang ang nag-expire. Ibig, ibig sabihin nun, yung 2 thirds, hindi pa expense. So, 2 thirds ng 16,800. 11,200. Number 3. The asset method was used in recording the office supplies. Office supplies naman tinatanong. So, parehas nung involved na transaction dito sa taas. Yung December 2 pa rin. Okay? Office supplies, 11,200. Eh, lumalabas, sabi, ha? Bakit? Lahat ba yan? Expense na? Lahat ba yan? Asset pa? Hindi na. Kasi, 2,000 na lang ang unused. So, journal entry would be to recognize the expense portion. Debit, office supplies expense. Okay, so kung office supplies lang ang ginamit, kanina, so office supplies din lang dito. To be consistent, 9,200. Ayan. Number 4, accrued interest on notes payable at December 31, 1,000. Accrued interest on notes payable. May notes payable ba tayo? Oo, nung 28. Purchase merchandise from M Manufacturing and issued promissory note of 44,000. So it was journalized as follows. The notes payable arose here, 44,800. Journal entry, accrual lamang ito, tama? A1, 2, 3, 4, B1, B2. Hmm, kung naalala mo pa, accrual of expenses, B1. Journal entry, debit interest expense, credit, accrued interest. Interest payable for 1,000. Next, fifth adjustment data. Accrued interest on notes receivable at December 31, 3,000. Kailan nag-arise yung ating notes receivable? Meron nga ba? Yes, December 30. Okay. Sold to the Gupan Trading Merchandise for 336,000. Nakatanggap tayo ng promissory note. Debit, notes receivable. Ayan yun. Credit sales, credit output tax. Journal entry, to accrue income. So, recognize income already earned but not yet collected. Debit, accrued interest receivable, 3,000. Credit, interest income, 3,000. Sixth, journal, adjustment journal entry. Adjusting journal entry. Accrued salary, sa of December 31, 12,000. No related transaction, no related journal entry. 
This is merely accrual. Debit, salaries, expense, credit accrued, salaries payable, 12,000. Number 7, accrued electric bill as of December 31, 10,000. So same nature, same nature yan. Wala din tayong journal entry, related transaction, merely accrual of expense. Debit, utilities, expense, credit, accrued, utilities, payable. Number 8, unsold merchandise inventory as of December 31, 200,000. Wala tayong related transaction. Wala din tayong related entry. Therefore, wala din tayong adjustment. Sinasabi lang ng number 8 na meron kang ending inventory na 200,000. No entry. Subalit, kahit na walo lang yung nakasadyan na info, meron tayong pang sham na adjustment. Okay? Pangsyam. So, huwag mong kakalimutan to sa exam tsaka sa quiz ninyo. Ano ba yung pangsyam? Yung pangsyam ay related dun sa recognition ng VAT payable or prepaid tax. Okay? Ito kasi yung pagbubungguin mo yung iyong input at saka output tax. So, the related adjusting entry must be debit. Output tax, credit. Input tax, credit. VAT payable ang meron kasi mas malaki yung output tax. 19,116. Thus, we have have effectively and efficiently satisfied this requirement. Then we go to the fourth requirement, prepare a 12-column worksheet. So, hindi na natin ipapakita yung mga formalities on how to make a worksheet. Papakita na natin kaagad-agad yung worksheet at kung paano ang mangyayari. Tama? Sa ating chapter 7, you learn the different column labelings or yung labels ng ating column dun sa ating service business. E dito, 12 columns, e doon 10 lang. So, paano to? Ano ba ang nadagdag? So, you pay attention, ano ang nadagdag dito? Nasingit. After the adjusted trial balance, yung dalawang columns, debit and credit, for your cost of goods sold. Ayan. Yung cost of goods sold ang nadagdag, debit and credit. So, kung mapapansin mo, all things are the same. Dapat maglagay ka ng heading, the name of the statement, the date of the statement. Lahat parehas, debit, credit, representing your money columns. All procedures would be the same, okay? Except for the minor additions tulad ng sabi natin. So, kung kopyahin mo yung nandun sa yung trial balance, that would represent your unadjusted trial balance. After which, lalagyan mo siya ng total dito sa baba. Obviously, the total is 1,847,100. Tulad ng nakasulat din dyan sa libro mo. Alright? If you have any question, aside from saying present sir, dun sa ating comment section sa baba, edi magtanong ka din dun sa baba, tama? Or kung gusto mo, tanongin mo din yung teacher mo. Uh, madali lang nilang sagutin yung mga queries mo. These are just basic accounting. Your teachers 100% can can guide you properly, okay? This is just an addition or supplement to your classroom discussions. Also, cash, accounts receivable. You have here, merchandise inventory. Ito yung iyong beginning, Okay. <clears throat> Furniture and fixtures, accounts payable, accounts payable, notes payable, input tax, inotis mo yung mga bagong account titles, output tax, alright, sales, sales discounts, purchases, fit in, purchase returns, purchase discounts, rent expense, utilities expense, salaries expense, and fit out being an expense account. Alright? Again, tulad ng sabi ni Sir Dave, dun sa ating chapter 7, lahat ng mga account titles na nag-arise lamang sa adjusting journal entries at wala naman before the adjusting entries, lahat yun isusulat mo dito sa baba ng total. So, kung pansin mo, wala kang depreciation expense from cash hanggang freight out. Wala. So, isusulat mo siya dito. Depreciation expense. Wala din lahat ng to. Okay? Dun sa ating unadjusted trial balance. When teachers like me teach in front of a live audience, we derive satisfaction to some extent from the interaction with students. Yung mga simpleng pagtawa mo sa mga jokes namin, they mean something to us. They make us happy. But teaching in front of the camera is a different thing. We don't even know if you're there. We don't even know if you're listening. So a simple like dun sa ating video or a simple present sir, nandito po kami nakikinig. We are watching sir. Will inspire us. When teachers like me teach in front of a live audience, we know that you are there. But teaching in front of the camera 
is not merely sharing our content. It means sharing our time, our devotion, and above all, our passion. So, yung simpleng pag-subscribe mo sa amin, it lets us know that you are there and we are here to continue what we are doing. So, ngayon pa lang, nagpapasalamat na kami. Diyan sa yung subscription, uh, it inspires us. It, since it inspires me to wake up every morning, prepare discussion materials, and continue what I am doing. So, thank you so much. Please continue sharing and liking and subscribing. Thank you. And so, therefore, they must be written below the totals. Ayan. Next, i-incorporate mo yung mga adjustments. So, same procedure. Ano ba yung first adjustment natin? Okay? Yung unang adjustment lang gagawin natin. Kasi nagawa na natin to before eh. It's hindi na rin maganda kung masyadong spoon feeding. Okay? Kailangan ikaw ang magpa-persevere. After all, hindi naman yung teacher mo magtitake ng board exam. Yung teacher mo, CPA na yan eh. Ikaw ang magtitake ng board exam. Kaya dapat ikaw yung magpupo. Sige. Okay? Yung una nating adjusting journal entry, debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. So, yun yung i incorporate mo dito. Okay? Debit, depreciation expense daw. Okay? Debit, depreciation expense kuno. 1,000. Kaya nandito siya sa debit column. Credit, accumulated depreciation. 1,000. Kaya nandito siya sa credit column naman. Okay? So on, so forth. Ayan. Wala namang problema eh. Hindi na ito conceptual. Pagka paulit-ulit mo na siyang ginagawa, it ceases to become conceptual. It only becomes procedural na lang. So, ang kailangan mo, ingat talaga. Okay? Ingat sa pagkikere over ng numbers, sa pagsusulat, sa pagpindot ng calculator. Yan lahat ay training para sa yan. Training yan para sa iyo. Okay? Alright. So, after the adjustments are plotted, the total of the adjustments should be 140,700. Of course, both your debit and credit. Adjusted trial balances will just be carryover balances from the unadjusted trial balance in consideration with the adjustments. So, yung cash, wala siyang adjustment. Kaya magkikarryover lang siya dito. Magpro-proceed siya dun sa debit balance. Ayan. Accounts receivable, ganun din. Wala. Eh, yung mga may adjustment, eh, di consider mo. Ganun lang yun. Totals would be 1,799,916. Same also for credit side. Cost of goods sold. Ito yung medyo bago sa atin. Merchandise inventory beginning, papatak siya dun sa cost of goods sold. Huwag mo ilalagay sa income statement muna kaagad-agad. Because our objective is to compute first for the cost of goods sold before we can effectively compute the income. The cost of goods sold, 40,000. Diyan sa pupwesto. And then your sales, doon siya sa income statement, hindi yan sa cost of goods sold. Sales discount, ganun din. Okay. Cost of goods sold components, you have your purchases. Ayan. Nasa debit side yung purchases. Yung freight in at purchases, magkakampi yan. Sana naaalala mo, tama? Ano yung mga magkakakampi at sino-sino yung magkakaaway. Purchase returns, deduction yan sa purchases. So, nandun siya sa kabilang banda. Ayan. And then, ayan. Merchandise inventory ending, padidact yan, tama? So, nasa credit ng cost of goods sold column. So, after totaling, you'll find out that the debit would have 695,000 and the credit would only have 231,800. The difference would be your cost of sales or cost of goods sold. Alam na natin yung amount na yan, eh. tama? If you prepare a separate cost of sales, Tulad ng nagawa na natin, then 463,200. 463,200 would be the balancing figure para maging 695 silang dalawa. Then such figure would proceed dun sa income statement. Then the rest would be the same. Parehas lang yung proseso dong ating pag-compute ng income statement tsaka balance sheet or statement of profit over or loss, statement of financial position. Masyado kasing mahaban sabihin yun. Hindi ko maintindihan kung bakit pinalitan pa nung standard yung tawag sa income statement tsaka sa balance sheet. But we understand each other. Okay? Net income would be 267,730. 267,730. Okay? Totals for the income statement 783,000 for the balance sheet 1,252,846. Okay? Thus, we have satisfied the requirement number 4. We are left with number 5 up to 10. So, statement of profit or loss for the month ended December 31. Madali na lang ito sa kadahilan ng pupulutin mo na lang yung figures dun sa yung worksheet. Pati rin ito, statement of changes in equity and statement of financial position. Nonetheless, papakita pa rin natin. Okay? From the worksheet, the data is carried over to a separate sheet to make it a formal statement of profit or loss. All figures are the same. 
formatting lang pagkakaiba. Pagdating kasi sa worksheet, wala kang deduction na makikita. Puro addition lahat yan. Tama? Ayan. Walang deduction sa worksheet. Puro add lahat yan. Add, add, add. E dito, sa formal statement, syempre, hindi po pwede yung ganun. So, sales, 780. Sales discounts, lahat ng to nandun sa worksheet as we have said. Okay? We have just followed the format for a formal statement of profit or loss. Net income must be 267,730. Alright? Next, statement of changes in equity. Same din lang dun sa mga nagawa na natin in the past. The total capital at the end of the period, 957,730. The statement of financial position or the balance sheet. Here, I followed the report form. So, various trading. Your current assets from cash up to your accrued interest receivable which arose only from the adjustments with total 1,202,846,000. The carrying book value of the furniture and fixtures considering the contra account accumulated depreciation would be 49. So yun lang yung ating total non-current assets. Please check your notes. I think there is a correction here dyan sa note mo. Pero dito corrected na siya. Your total assets as well has a correction dyan sa book mo. So please pakitignan. 1,251,846 must be the correct amount. Alright? Liability and proprietorship. So, current, non-current also. May non-current pa tayo. Wala tayong non-current. So, the total liabilities, only current, would be 294,116. Alright? The various capital of 957,730 as shown here in our statement in, of changes in equity. Then, you have your total assets balancing your total liabilities and total proprietorship. 1,251,846. Alright? Next, requirement number 8 closing entries. So, kung mapapansin mo, mas madami yung ating closing entries dito kesa doon sa service business, nung tayo ay nasa service business pa lang. But the objective is still the same. Pagdating kasi sa service business, tulad nung natapos na nga natin, you usually have four closing entries only. Pagdating sa merchandising, the objective is still the same. Closing entries are made in order to bring all nominal accounts to zero balances. Okay? So, yun pa rin ang ating objective dito. So, sales, nominal account, normal, credit balance, so ngayon, i-debit mo siya. Ang kapartner niya would be the income and expense summary. Sales discount, baliktad naman yung normal balance dun sa sales. Okay, that is also a nominal account. I-close mo din, income and expense summary. To set up your cost of goods sold, you have your merchandise ending, purchase returns and allowances, purchase discounts, usually have uh, normal credit balances. So ngayon, naka debit naman siya. Okay? We're setting up your cost of sales account title. Para later on, may bunggo natin siya dun sa income and expense summary. We will show you. Okay? And then, merchandise inventory beginning, purchases free in, usually have debit balances. So, ngayon, kinikredit mo para maklose. Cost of sales as set up there. Okay? Income and expense summary. Then, the expenses would be credited, normally debit balances. Then, the interest income, being an income account having a credit, normal credit balance would be debited. And everything would be close to the capital account. So, effectively, dito class, makikita mo. So, kung may drawing, iklo-close mo din. Nagkataon lang dito sa problem natin, walang withdrawal. Alright? Pero kung may withdrawal, dapat iklo-close mo rin siya. Tulad sa service business. So, as of this point, bago mo siya i-close dito sa ating Uh, capital account, kunin mo yung balance ng income and expense summary account. It must be equal to the net income shown in the income statement. Okay? Next, second to the last requirement, post-closing trial balance. Again, this is the same post-closing trial balance we used to prepare when we were in service business. Objective, to check the equality of debits and credits just like any other trial balance. But this time, wala na kasi yung mga nominal accounts. So, ang makikita mo na lamang dito ay lahat ng real accounts. Okay? The balance would be 1,252,846. Okay? Finally, requirement number 10, reversing entries. Tulad ulit nung reversing entries na ginawa natin nung nakaraan, there are only four categories na kailangang i-reverse. Alright? Kung nag-fall yung adjustment entries, once again, ang subject ng reversing entries ay 
yung mga adjusting journal entries. So lahat ng kasama dun sa apat na classifications na yun, yun lang yung i-reverse natin. Ano-ano nga uli yung apat na yun? Entries when made in the original journal entries used either the income method or the expense method. Kailangan i-reverse mo yun. Or if these are accrual of expenses of income, yun yung other two. So yung ating adjustments... Kung titignan mo, ito lang yung mga nag-qualify based on those four criteria para ma-reverse. So, we have five reversing entries out of the eight adjustment entries. Uh, nine lahat kung i-include mo yung no entry ng number eight. Okay? Alright. Okay, class. So, that's the bell already. That's it for this meeting. Uh, so, ganun-ganun lang, class. A few minutes of your time every day, imbis na kung ano-ano yung pinapanood mo, just make it a habit to watch our videos uh, bilang tulong na rin dun sa sarili mong pag-aaral. Why? Kasi tatandaan mo, hindi lahat ng nababasa mo ng mag-isa ay maririnig mo. At hindi din lahat ng mga naririnig mo ay mababasa mo. Tulungan yan. So with that, see you in our next meeting. See you in the next lesson.